All right, so getting to know me, the first card says, if I was a kind of weather, I'd be a nice autumn day. Not raining or snowing, though. Sunny, but chill. <laughs> if I was a piece of furniture, I would be the dad chair. You know the dad chair? Not the couch. That other chair, a little bit worn. It's got some charm. It's comfy. I'm the dad chair. <laughs> what is love? What is love? Um, what is love? What is love? How you show that you're passionate about something, that you care about something or someone. Um, if it brings you joy, if you want uh, that person to have the best in life and, and uh, you want them to find joy in their lives, if you care about their emotions and their feelings, you probably love them. The philosopher Kant called music a quickening art because it can bring things to life. It can make a memory. It can change your mood. It has more power to stimulate the brain than anything else. When was the last time a piece of music brought you to tears or made you feel so joyful you wanted to break into dance? Scientists have found music can be mapped to over 13 different feelings, but how and why does it make us feel so much? John and I dove into the emotionality of music. Now, we all intuitively know that music can actually catalyze and trigger emotions in all of us. So we actually went about measuring John's emotional response to three different conditions, measured by both galvanic skin conductance, his respiratory rate, and his heart rate variability. We're actually able to measure how emotional John was getting watching this video and listening to one of his favorite and most sentimental songs. The first was a relatively boring and benign fish video with elevator music in the background. Right. Nothing like watching a screensaver. <laughs> Nothing like it. Pretty much no response there. But we also tested John's emotional response to his All of Me music video, which showcases images, of course, from his wedding and of him and his wife. We also tested his response to a very sentimental song by Nina Simone. Now this is the subject that feels very close to home for me. I feel like emotion is the currency that I deal in. It's the currency that music deals in. Before we explore the why and the how, let's meet an artist whose craft is measured in how she translates emotion in rhythm, song, and movement. Flamenco is so raw. The audience and us, we're creating this whole ambience. One little note of the guitar can transcend my whole body. One, as we say, quejillo of the singer. When they do like this little tiny thing that just magical. My name is Fanny Ara. I'm from the French Basque country and I'm a flamenco dancer. What I love about flamenco is this contrast between being wild and being elegant. And what really got me into it is the fact that it's so improvised. So you can find a freedom of expression between the guitar and the singing and the dancing and create this magical explosion of emotion. You get in this trance, you, you actually, I will call it a, bit, a little bit high. We're high and we're just looking at each other and it's just this magical moment and the audience can feel it too. So this, this magic actually is very much talked about and we have a word for it. It's uh, called Duende, as uh, Federico Garcia Lorca said in one of his uh, work, the duende never repeat itself. So it's like, as he says it, it's like waves during a storm. It just cannot repeat ever. And that's only in flamenco. I'm so curious to see if I have emotions. 
you do in fact have lots of emotions. Oh, yeah, yeah. Excellent. But before we jump in, I just kind of wanted to, to touch base because you are really going to be the person who's able to explain your relationship with music and emotion. Uh -huh. Because in human history, music has always played a role. Any big occasion, birthdays, yes. weddings, yes. funerals, war cries. You need us, <laughs> you need us. John wants to feel needed. <laughs> we all have music all around the world and we've had it for so long. Yes. It's a rally cry. It's magical. What's magical about it? Tell, why is this so magical? It's transcendent, like you said, it's global. It, it defies language barriers and cultural barriers. And there's something magical about it. It can transport you in a way that other forms of art just can't do. I mean, it's true. Yeah. And we're actually gonna see you getting transported. Oh. If you're ready for it. Yes. All right, so I wanna show you a couple of different plots. I'm gonna start off with the boring fish video. Okay. So what we're looking at here, we're looking at that galvanic skin response right here at the top and at the bottom. So what do you see here? You see a couple of little peaks in the beginning, and then what do you see after? Flat line. Nada. Mm -hmm. You're, in I'm the dead. beginning, slightly you think that the fish are cute. Yeah. That's what I'm seeing here. Okay. So this is really, we're just seeing novelty. Okay. So now let's go into how you responded to watching your own All of Me video. Uh, we see a lot more. Uh -huh. We see a lot more action. We see a f many different peaks, but what I found interesting in this data set, and maybe uh -huh. you can describe what was going on with you while you were watching the video, is that there were different peaks at different time points. Mm -hmm. So it looked like there were some lulls, some troughs, but definitely different peaks, but throughout the song, something would trigger you and then you'd get the emotional arousal again. It really brought back some amazing memories to watch the video. Uh, we got married that week, and uh, it was such a fun video to shoot. Nabil Elderkin, our friend, uh, shot the video, and he's the one who introduced us in the first place. And he just did such a beautiful job capturing the emotion of the song and the essence of our relationship in a music video. And for me to watch it really did give me uh, Good feelings. Nostalgia. Yes. Those are real memories. Nostalgia, absolutely. Look at what we're looking at here. So is this the Nina Simone song? This is the Nina Simone song. Okay. Yeah. You see emotional activity and peaks all throughout. Yeah. It's not just those moments of maybe a clip from a wedding day where yeah. you can see your wife's face. Mm -hmm. You were feeling something. It yeah. transported you somewhere. Yeah. I had my eyes closed and it uh, allowed me to focus on the tone of her voice, the plaintive quality in her voice, the beauty in it. You hear pain, you hear uh, vulnerability, and you hear beauty at the same time, and it makes me feel something. This is astounding, mm -hmm. and it's all throughout. It almost looks like musical notes, like you were being carried. Mm -hmm. There was a journey and an arc. I felt that, yeah? I definitely felt that. Okay, so John, I'm curious, another question for you. As a musician, as someone who uses their craft, their art form to elicit and catalyze emotion in, in people. I mean, your music is a part of other people's memories. Yeah. You know, those like markers that we were talking of about? Of course. The, the weddings, the birthdays, maybe the you know big prom dance, whatever it may be, but your voice and your music is a part of that. But how do you feel about the measurement of emotion? Well, Seeing this chart makes me want to see the chart for my listeners when they're at my concerts and when they're listening to my albums. Uh, I want to see how they respond. Uh, and it'd be so interesting to measure their emotional response. Um, it's weird because you don't want to reduce your creativity to science and a bunch of data and charts about, and you don't want to get like overly tied to this data when you're trying to create something fresh and beautiful and new uh, because then it feels like you're just kind of allowing a computer program to write your song for you. But I'm intrigued by the idea of after creating something that you really love and you think will be effective with people, seeing if it actually has that effect. I'm curious. Yeah. You're giving me full leeway to come and strap up sensors to yes. anyone in your concert. Let's focus group. <laughs> Let's focus group in the studio. Yes. But it is truly subjective as well, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So different types of music where you're going to have these sort of different types of responses. And I'd imagine there's probably a difference between 
how you respond based on where you are, uh, what the other stimuli around you are, um, if it's associated with a particular positive moment in your life, and then we'll always carry that association forward. Uh, so it might not even be so much the music, but it's the combination of the music and the setting and who you've listened to it with and all these other things. Yeah, you, I mean, we're weaving in those associations again, mm -hmm. right? Because a song can be a song, right? Yeah. To me, as a scientist, it's another piece of data. Yeah. It's a stimulus. But the way that you get a stimulus to elicit that true emotion from a human being mm -hmm. is by creating an association of some sort. And that, that's why uh, there's, uh, there's work and care put into the music video as well. Because uh, you're helping your audience create associations by... Uh, by assigning a visual to what they're listening to. And then they'll always think of the song and the video together as well. And so if you're able to do that right, then uh, it will help the song be more effective because there's the right visual associated with it. Yeah, that's, I mean, and it works. Yeah. I can tell you, it definitely yeah. works. That's what our job is to do. You're very good at We've it. We've got to transport people. <laughs> What was really fascinating about talking to John about the power of music as it relates to emotion is that most of us love music and know intuitively that it does in fact make us emotional. There are breakup songs that we listen to and songs that remind us of our childhood, of our parents, songs that make us hopeful about the future, about society. But really, it's a black box. Our emotions sometimes feel a little bit mystical, a little bit non-tangible and not data-driven. But what was really interesting is sitting down with John as an artist, as someone who creates music that elicits emotion, to be able to show him that you can, in fact, measure it. It's real. The same way a musical note is truly real. You can measure emotion. It's a physiological response in the body. And you have this amazing interplay between the notes someone is hearing, the words someone is hearing, and what's actually going on in their hearts, in their lungs, and even on their skin. I love that people react to music in different ways emotionally. I really hadn't thought of that scientifically before. Music is meant to be shared. It's a shared feeling. And when you make music with other people, or listen to music with other people, it becomes something else. It can become a new emotion entirely to experience together. Meditating with Headspace has been shown to get your happiness up and your stress levels down in just 10 days. Get your mood boost and try it in the app for free now. See you again next week when we'll be exploring whether or not music can improve your focus.